The 315P is an exploration ship of Star Citizen that specializes in pathfinding. Produced by Origin Jumpworks, it has been available since pre-alpha version of Star Citizen in 2014, with the anticipation of exploratory gameplay. Despite the fact that exploration gameplay has yet to be implemented, is the 315P a ship worth considering? Hi, I'm Joru5. In this video, I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like, my final verdict on the 315P and what I will do to improve this historic ship of Star Citizen. If you are not familiar with the Pathfinder class, here's a brief explanation. Exploration ships in Star Citizen specialize in one of the following three subclasses, Expedition, Touring and Pathfinder. The Expedition class specializes in planetary exploration. Ships of this class are typically medium to large in size, as they are designed to support a crew for an extended period of time and possibly carry a ground vehicle. Some examples are the Karak and the Freelancer Dur. Touring ships are designed for comfortable cruising on safe routes. They vary in size and some examples are the Phoenix and the 300i. The Pathfinder class focuses on deep space exploration and specializes in two activities, mapping new routes by finding the best location for jump points with ships like the Mustang Beta and Aurora LX or patrolling and scouting with ships like the Hornet Tracker and Terrapin. Ships in this class are usually small. The 315P is Origins option for a Pathfinder ship. And now it's time for Things I Like. Expedition Spirit Basically, the Pathfinder class only requires a large quantum tank. However, ships in this class usually have additional features such as small accommodations to support long journeys or advanced sensors to scout the area. The 315P not only has all of that, at least on paper, but it also adds two features that are unusual for a Pathfinder ship, a tractor beam and good cargo capacity. In my opinion, these additional features bring the 315P more in line with the Expedition class, which is fascinating because that will make the 315P 15P the smallest ship in that class, while officially the smallest ship classified as an expedition is the Freelancer Dur. The idea of a compact expedition ship is intriguing and the 315P comes close. Good looking. All 300 Cedars vessels share a pleasing slick design that belies a considerable size. In fact, you might not expect that these ships are even slightly larger than a prospector. Now, aesthetically, there is not much variation between all the versions of the 300 series, and the most noticeable difference is just the coloring. In my opinion, the 315P is the version with the best coloring. Acceleration With a top speed of 12.23 meters per second, the 315P is only average for size 2 ships. However, the 315P has one of the best boosts in the game capable of getting the ship to top speed in just 6.8 seconds, reaching a boost acceleration ratio of 179. For comparison, the 350R, which is one of the fastest ships in the game, has a boost acceleration ratio of 195. The powerful boost acceleration of the 315P allows it to escape from the most dangerous situations. Cargo the 315P can carry 12 SCU, which is a considerable amount considering that it is not classified as a freighter. The cargo capacity is one third larger than the base version. This has been made possible by the addition of a second cargo bay. Smuggler Appeal a good cargo capacity, combined with powerful sensor, a tractor beam and one of the best boost accelerations in the game, gives the 315P the potential to be more than just a resourceful exploration ship. In fact, its capabilities can make it a great option for smugglers looking for a ship that can handle illegal cargo. Fuel Scoop The 315P is equipped with a fuel scoop that allows the hydrogen tank to be refilled during flight. It should be noted that this feature is not uncommon, as about half of the ships in Star Citizen have it installed, 
and the one of the 315P is not particularly powerful. Still, it could be a useful feature when it becomes possible to explore remote and underdeveloped systems. And now, the things I don't like about the 315P. Tractor beam. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't like the fact that the 315P has a tractor beam. But since the release of the ship in 2014, the tractor beam has never been put into operation and has remained an aesthetic element to this day, which would be just an annoyance if it did not take up a size 3 slot with no way to replace it with anything functional. As a result, the 315P has only two size 3 weapon hardpoints, one less than any other 300 version, including the racing one, which significantly affects its combat performance. Missing sensors The official description of the 315P states that it features a more robust power plant and a custom scanning package exclusively designed by Chimera Communications. Now, the sensors produced by Chimera Communications currently available in the game are the Size 2 Surveyor and the Size 1 Surveyor Light. Ships such as the Mole, Reliant Sand, Prospector and Vulture carry these sensors. But in the 315P there is no trace of Chimera sensors, as the only one installed are the Wilsop Capstan. I do not understand this omission, when the presence of Chimera sensor is mentioned in the main description of the ship. Atmospheric Flight being so sleek and aerodynamic, you might expect the 315P to fly well in atmospheric conditions. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The 315P handles poorly in the atmosphere, with unpredictable behavior, slow turns and low top speed. In my opinion, any exploration ship should have decent handling in all conditions. Value The 315P has one big problem. For its price, it has nothing really interesting to offer. It is not effective in combat due to its poor balance of agility, resistance, cross-section and firepower. As a result, it struggles even with medium-risk target bounties. It's not profitable to trade. 12 SCU is not a bad capacity considering its size, but it is far from being enough to make decent profits. The same goes for smuggling illegal goods, which have the potential to make tens of thousands of USC in profit with just 12 SEU, but the risks are so high and the demand so low that it is just a boring gamble that will end up losing money in the long run. And since the 315P can't carry a land vehicle, it's not ideal for ground missions into enemy bunkers. So the capabilities of the 315P are more or less the same as starter ships like the 100i or the Cutter, but the 315P costs 900,000 UEC. For about the same price or even less, you can get more useful alternatives like the Arrow, the Nomad, the Titan or the Reliant Core. Weak Headlights For an exploration ship, the 315P has rather weak headlights. For comparison, those on the 100i are much more powerful. The 315P should at least have the same headlights as its little sister. Cockpit Layout The cockpit of the 315P has a lot of unused space, which makes it feel essentially empty. A more compact arrangement of the screen will be more comfortable. Instead, with the current layout, you have to lower your head to see most of the information. Exterior Design A little disclaimer, this point deals with role-playing aspects of the ship that do not affect gameplay, but may be of interest to players who value immersion. On paper, the 315P has many features that make it well suited for exploration, but in its exterior design it's not without its flaws. The ladder is not practical for getting in and out of the ship while wearing cumbersome thermal suits, not to mention the difficulty of climbing it with serious injuries. The ship also has an elevated parking position, which make it unstable on planets with severe weather conditions. And the landing gear looks a little fragile, especially compared to more robust and compact design like the one installed on the Aurora. Interior Design like the previous point, this one deals with the role-playing aspects of the ship. 
Since 2014, the 315P has used the same interior as the 300 High, which is a luxury vessel, but such interiors are not the best for exploration. First, it has no side windows, which will be very useful for checking outside, and there is no practical reason for a retractable bed, as there are no obstacles to line down. However, such a feature could be useful for placing something on top of the bed, such as some extra storage. The inclusion of such a large sink seems unnecessary. A smaller kitchenette will suffice, freeing up space for other features such as a map or a small science station. Instead of the luxury glass cabinet, an exosuit compartment would be more useful and immersive. The bathroom has no shower, not even a small sink. A compact multifunction bathroom like the one in the Vulture would be ideal. The spacious cargo hold is located directly above the accommodation. In an exploration ship, it would be very useful to have an additional opening to access the cargo from inside the ship. Even if a Pathfinder ship doesn't really need a small decompression chamber, its presence will make the 315P a small but complete exploration vessel, like the one on the Freelancer. Final verdict Before we come to the final verdict, I would like to remind you that if you would like to support the creation of these videos, all you need to do is click like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Now, I like the idea of the 315P, which is to make a dedicated exploration version of a touring vessel. What I don't like is the approach taken in putting together this ship. The interiors are identical to the luxury version and most of the features that will give this ship meaning are not functional, although some of them could have been easily implemented, such as the presence of a chimera sensor. The feeling of having an underpowered 300 i with just a different color is very strong. In fact, the only real advantage of the 315P over the base model is its increased cargo capacity of just 4 SEU and a negligible increase in top speed, which is too little for much less offensive power and a higher price tag. Sure, the 315P also has a much larger hydrogen tank, but since they both have a fuel scoop, it doesn't make much difference. For all these reasons, my rating for the 315P is 4 out of 10. It is clear that the current state of the 315P is provisional, but the lack of exploratory gameplay doesn't justify the lack of effort made since 2014 to make this ship useful or at least to diversify its design from the base version. I would have liked to see some diversification like in the Mustang series, where the exploration variant, the Beta, is the only Mustang with small accommodation. As a result, the 315P is lacking in both performance and roleplay, as the interior is the same as the luxury version and does not express an exploratory spirit. Some may argue that this is intentional, as the 315P is a luxury exploration vessel, but I honestly find find it a convenient justification, because the 315P deserves to be a ship with its own identity. Now I would like to end this video with a general reflection on the exploration class as a whole. While exploration gameplay is still a long way off, ships in this class need to have a place in current gameplay, not to be a placeholder for future possibilities. The simplest and most future-proof change is to make the exploration class a sort of tank class. Ships that have little offensive capability but are very hard to take down. This will be justified by the fact that exploration ships have to face extreme conditions to ensure the safety of their crew, like the Terrapin for example, and facilitate search and rescue missions when flying ships of this class, for example by pinpointing the exact location of objectives. In conclusion, the 315P is more than a ship, it's the perfect representation of what the exploration class is today, a placeholder completely absent from current gameplay, waiting for a better future. But a real space simulation game needs exploration, because having Star Wars stuff is fine, but adding the Star Trek immersion to it is just awesome. In the next episode, The Cutter. Can you guess what I like and what I don't? Until next time, see you in the verse. I wonder if you'd stay 
If you knew the things I've kept away I wonder what you'll do Would you charge me with your hate? If you know the things I've kept away